What's up, everybody? What's up? What's up? This is your girl, Lisa McClendon, and today I want to share with you um, uh, part one about my journey um, with depression and my fight against depression and my win. I am winning every day against um, depression, and this is something that is very strong, has been for years, but it's now really beginning to be um, more of a wake-up call, I believe, to the church. Uh, with a lot of pastors, unfortunately, taking their own lives. Um, I have dealt with depression and suicide. I have suicidal thoughts. Um, I have also dealt with anxiety attack, panic attacks. Um, it has affected my body. It has affected my my thinking. It has affected my days. It has affected my marriage. It has affected my children. It has affected my career. And it's affected all of those things mostly because at the time I did not realize what it was that I was dealing with. And um, I am so happy that I do now understand what it is um, that I am dealing with. And since I have had an understanding and have been um, embracing what it is, understanding what it is, um, addressing what it is, being open about what it is, being honest to myself, I have been able to be in control. I think the worst things Christians can do is be in denial. Please, let's stop being in denial because we are afraid about how we are afraid of how people will judge us. And the reality is, it just makes it so much worse. So let's just jump right into it. Um, as a child, I was molested at age seven. I think a lot of you who have followed me in the last thirteen years know my story. I'm pretty transparent about my life. Um. But at age seven um, is where it started for me. Something very tragic happened to my life. Somebody took control of me as a kid and took my um, my innocence. And from that moment, I have looked at life in a very negative way. Um, I started looking at life in a very negative way because something very negative happened to me. And I actually read and um, saw a documentary about depression. Um, if you want to look it up, go to YouTube. BBC documentary about depression. Amazing. It really gave me so much understanding about what it is that I was dealing with. Because when you're dealing with people who don't deal with depression, they can do a few things. One thing they can do is say that you're exaggerating or think that you're, you're exaggerating. Another thing that people can do is just say, oh, you just have an excuse. And people could just write you off and think that, and, and misunderstand who you are and just treat you any kind of way. Um, so those are some of the things that I've had to deal with, with people not understanding. And you know, to be honest, me not understanding myself. But in that documentary, something that they said that really stuck out to me was, um, when you are a child and something traumatic happens to you, especially when you're a child and something bad happens to you, Something happens to your brain where your perception in life, you always see things from the negative perspective first. And all it is is a way to protect yourself. It's not, it doesn't make you a bad person. It's just, it is your way to protect yourself. It's almost like your brain saying, hey, the last time you looked at this situation positive, something bad happened. So this time going in, you're going to look for all the negative to protect yourself. Once you can pinpoint all the positive or all the negative, then you're free to be okay. But the problem with that is it usually takes a long time to even see something positive because when you're looking for negative, you'll find it. So that's pretty much how my life was going. And early on in my career, it was very hard for me because I've unfortunately had a couple of run-ins with some artists who I perceive were being negative. And in hindsight, it wasn't necessarily that they were being negative. They were being themselves, and life is not always what you wanted. And I had to learn for myself, life isn't always what I wanted. Things can't always be my way. And one of the reasons why I wanted things my way is because I didn't have my way as a child, and it cost me greatly. So it wasn't necessarily a negative thing. It was a, pos it was a thing, not necessarily positive either, but it was a way to protect myself. I remember even having panic attacks as, ch as a child when my parents were driving. I didn't have control. And when I would wake up and realize someone else was behind the wheel and I had to trust them to take care of me, I would have panic attacks. A panic attack, for those that don't know, it's kind of like when your heart is racing really, really bad, uh, really, really fast. Your heart actually is like it's beating out of your chest. You can't hardly breathe. 
Um, you can't think right. Um, and you just got to get away. You just got to get out. You got to get away. You got you to run. And if people don't let you get away to run or you don't realize you need to run and get away, it can usually turn into anger. And now you're lashing out at everyone. And I've actually done that too. Um, I have um, waken up some mornings very depressed, so depressed, um, where it felt like I was in the bottom of a tunnel. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you a demonstration to under, so you can understand. This is how I would wake up some mornings. That's how I'd wake up. I would wake up with a little hole and, and I couldn't even think. And my husband would, would ask me if I was okay. I really couldn't answer him. I would be upset when I felt like he didn't understand. He would try to fix things because he loved me and I didn't want him to fix it because I didn't know what he needed to fix. Um, it was just so much going on. My children, there were times that I would lock myself in the room. Um, and I've always been open and honest with my kids. I didn't know what was going on, but I would always tell them, hey guys, mommy's not feeling good. So I just need you to give me a moment. And they will always understand. My daughter, who I love so much, Diamond, would come. And she would even see. She didn't know what it was. I didn't even really know what it was. Know what it was. And she would say, Mom, you're okay. Um, and I would just kind of look at her. And then she would say, Mom, you need to take a break. And then I would. And that's really key for people that struggle or are fighting the good fight against depression is understanding you have to know when enough is enough. You have to know that we're not wired like everyone else, that we can't do what everyone else does. And what I mean by that is I have to schedule out my day. I have to plan in advance what it is that I'm doing so that I can be in control, so that I can't lose it. Um, when I felt like I've done too much work, I feel drained. It feels like someone has drained all of the energy out of my back. And I have to tell myself, okay, you've done enough for today. And I have to call it quit for that day. And if I have a long day, I have to make sure that I eat right, that I go to bed at a proper time so that I can wake up well rested. Another thing that is very important for me is getting up early to pray, to meditate, to to think. I do a lot of thinking. Um, because a lot of times things happen and I have to think about what's happening so that I can respond. And it's funny because the Bible does say that we are to be quick to think, um, quick to hear and slow to speak. And so I have learned and I'm learning to master, um, to think before I speak, because a lot of times I would speak because I was afraid speak out of fear, speak that you're going to take advantage of me, speak that you're going to, because you're going to hurt me. And I'm learning that people aren't intentionally hurting me. People aren't intentionally trying to come at me. It's just my warped perception of what's going on around me. So it has definitely been a journey. I'm in such an amazing place in my life right now. I am actually loving life. I have been suicidal in the past. Thank God I have not acted on it, but the thoughts have come in the past and now with a better understanding, I um, I have been able to overcome it. Um, but what I plan on doing in these blogs is just giving some sneak peeks into my day, good days and bad days, telling you what happened and how I dealt with it in hopes to help you. And I pray that it blesses you because it is really changing my life just to have an understanding and not being ignorant of Satan's devices, but I can tell you that he's not winning this battle with me. I am winning this battle. And today is a good day for me. I'm happy to say that. And so if you are struggling today, let me encourage you and say great things are looking for you. Great things are looking for you today. So just be uh, mindful of that, that your life is not over. Someone else is dealing with the same thing, has dealt with this on a hard, hard level, and you are not alone. You are not alone. God bless you. I love you, and I'll see you in the next vlog.